after many years of studying, training, creating, practicing, and teaching the martial arts, uh, I have this summation of martial arts as it relates to the human being. When I was uh, in my younger years, I would have people uh, come to me sometimes and ask me, why did I teach violence, martial arts specifically? And I said, I'm not teaching violence. I'm not teaching another human being to be violent or giving them the tools to hurt another human being, you know, intentionally, you know, or just not being warranted. And I have had uh, potential students over the years as well who were younger, who had parents, and the parents had other relatives say, why don't you allow your daughter or your son to take more slots? And then the parent will respond sometimes and say, I don't want them to go out and try to beat anybody up or become a bully, or I don't want to teach them or have him teach them how to fight or teach them violence. Now, these types of responses come from individuals that are unlearned as it relates to martial arts. These individuals uh, watch too much television. They don't use critical thinking. And what's really ironic is that these same individuals that say that I don't want to learn, you know, violence or I don't want my children to learn violence or how to fight because I don't want them to be too aggressive these same individuals will call the police if there's an intruder in their home guess what someone who has the potential to be violent a police officer they carry weapons they can come in numbers they have guns so what's the difference and why are you calling the police if you don't be believe in violence because it could potentially lead up to violence is that correct yes it is of course so what is this stigma about martial arts being violent well let's look at it from this standpoint we live in a vast world it uh, 7.5 billion people on the planet Everyone is not uh, nonviolent. There are some very violent human beings on planet Earth. There are some people who have no sympathy, no compassion for humanity, would have no problem taking another individual's, another human being's life. They'll take a hammer to you, a knife to you, a sword, an ice pick or a gun or whatever other weapon and they'll take your life and not lose any sleep these people exist so if you or a loved one who is nonviolent encounter the individual that I just uh, described how would you handle that situation if you had no weapons or if the police were not there or if no one else was there to intervene or stop it how would you handle that situation I learned an expression a long time ago uh, from my mom and my uh, grandparents it's better safe than sorry certain situations it's better safe to carry a gun or to own a firearm or to own some weapon than to be unprepared it's better safe than sorry that as the winter progresses and you have snowstorms and things of this nature to have extra blankets and flashlights and batteries and food in your pantry and so forth than to be caught without. It's better safe than sorry to go into a environment where you know that there's potential for violence to go in numbers as opposed to alone. Don't you think it's better safe than sorry? So. Let's talk about the martial arts for 
a moment. Virtually every older martial arts style or system came into existence to protect the existing village, the existing uh, providence, country, city, state, or whatever of society against the tyranny of outsiders or someone that would have done harm to those residents. If you lived on an island, if you lived in a town, if you lived in a city, and there was the potential always for someone to rob you, try and rape you or your daughter, your child, or to do harm to you just in general, martial arts came into existence to protect the existing societies. That was the purpose of martial arts thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. And in modern years, over the past 50 years or so, 100 years, many other martial arts styles and systems came into existence, you know, and they generally pushed more towards sport in recent decades I should say so getting back to the original premise of martial arts it was to protect it was for self-defense now yes there's a plethora of martial arts styles and systems across the world you have them from one corner of the planet to another there's martial arts styles and systems in Africa you have them in Central America you have them all over Asia Korea China Japan, Okinawa, Taiwan, uh, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, or the old Cambodia and so forth, Laos, wherever there are martial arts uh, historical systems and styles across the planet. They have their differences, they have their similarities, but they were created fundamentally for the same purpose, to protect to defend never just simply to hurt another human being when I began martial arts as a child the first thing that I was taught and told was to never take advantage of my skills never use my newfound skills to harm another human being never use them unless it was absolutely necessary and it was only for self-defense and I have taught this for 35 years plus you never use your skill or your set of skills to harm another human being only use just enough to defend yourself and once the situation has ceased you cease you go no further than that so this is one of the things one of the great lessons that martial arts teach you temperance self-control or it should but there are individuals that don't follow or abide by this rule or this principle these individuals are renegades or they're just simply something else they're not true martial artists I don't care how skillful they become when you abuse that which you have learned then you are an abuser of that particular craft so martial arts is something that teaches you encourages you how to get along with your neighbors how to exercise restraint constraint how to avoid a situation by verbally trying to discharge the situation or verbally trying to redirect in a situation that could potentially end up in a physical situation I don't want any trouble because you know what you're capable of doing now there's a lot of wannabes in martial arts there's a lot of people who think that they're good in martial arts but they don't put the time in because it is a matter of blood sweat and tears if you're serious about your particular art or craft it is something that you live you breathe you sleep this thing called martial arts if you really are a martial artist it is not a hobby it's not a pastime it is a way of life so martial arts is not about violence 
it originally was designed, every aspect of martial arts, every style and system of martial arts was originally designed to protect the individual or the village or the, uh, the nation or whomever at that particular time. And it has evolved into more of a spiritual thing. So it's not about physical confrontation as it was in the beginning or in its genesis. Martial arts is about development of character. At the end of the day, it's about character. Walking away, walking away from a situation and living to see another day. That's really it. That's all. I wanted to uh, sort of reiterate what I was saying that uh, martial arts is a way of life. And I want to say this. Um, we must realize that there are many things that make us whole and complete in this world. And everything is important. We must not just simply provide shelter, food, and clothing for our families. We should also provide physical protection for our families. You know, one of the greatest mistakes I think that we as human beings make is that we assume that a third party or some other entity's responsibility is to protect us. Fundamentally that job rests upon us as individuals. You have a lock on your door at your home, your front, your side, your back door. You have locks on your windows. Some people even have bars on their front doors and back doors. What's the purpose of the locks if it's not to protect those that are inside, within? Now, if someone were to violate that space and they were to get through your door or your fortress, as it were, and invade your home, what would you do? Succumb? Give in to? Allow those intruders to come in and just take over? rape and or kill your family and even you take you away from your family we have to think about these things and not just simply think about them but we have to act upon those things and be proactive as well you should have a weapon in your home or maybe several weapons in your home depending on the construct of your family how many people live there you know the scripture says that a man that won't provide for his home is worse than an infidel and even if you are a single mother in a home without a father you must bear this in mind as well protect your family in every regard every respect I outlined shelter food clothing and so forth even spiritually you must give your children your upcoming children that you are raising that's in your care your protection you must give them some values about life so that they can better see how to navigate in the world in which we live you must teach them how to look out for potential danger individuals that uh, could potentially intend them some some sort of harm so uh, I know I'm rambling on a little bit but it's okay I have no problem rambling on when it's something that's a value that I'm sharing with you so uh, I began this conversation about um, being able to protect yourself and what martial arts was really all about and it's not about violence. It's, it's about protecting oneself, one's family, those that are weak and less capable and are able to protect themselves. That's what it's all about but that's never going to be the initial thing. It's never violence first. And then you don't walk around going for bad saying, you know, I, I'm a black belt, I'm a fifth degree, I'm a master. You don't do those types of things. People, for the most part, know when you are genuine. They know when you are legitimate. They just judge you by your character. There's a certain aura that a true martial artist or a true master of martial arts carries with them all of the time. And it's not uh, a narcissistic flavor, as it were. It's not someone walking around trying to go for bad, saying that they beat so many people in karate matches and they had so many street fights real martial artists don't do that they just absolutely do not 
And even if you live your whole lifetime as a martial artist or a martial arts practitioner or a master and have never had one fight, guess what? You've actually won. Because that was the whole purpose of, and the whole goal in the first place is to avoid confrontation by any means necessary. But if peradventure your back is against the wall, you have no other means to escape, then you do what you've been taught to do, what you have trained to do, then and only then. When that occasion arises, that sleeping tiger within rises as well. And once it's all over and said and done, let tiger rest again. It's that simple. This is Brother Teacher. I hope that this was of value to you and that you have benefited. If so, please like and share this video with other people that you care about. Because I may not always show you physical uh, videos. Some of the things that I tell you, I just want you to use this up here. I want you to think. I want you to actually sit down and question yourself about these life's issues, as it were, that I'm bringing forward to you. That was it. And that was all. Enjoy your day or your evening, depending on where you are on earth. Brother Teacher out.